Saints, and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. My name is Messenger Paula. Shabbat Shalom. Beautiful day here in Paris. And I'm here with this huge message from the Most High Father. I come to you humbly in Yeshua HaMashiach's holy name. I pray that you stick through this with me because I'm doing the best I can. It's impossible for me to just you know, because it's just so big. So let's try to go step by step um, in this series. This is part two of the series, and we're talking about the characters um, inside the TV show Netflix's um, Troll Hunters. We're going to talk about their archetypes, and we're going to talk about the four groups of people, the four groups that will be saved um, who will escape the the coming wrath of, of, of the Most High God. We're talking about um, the day of, of wrath here. So he is giving me this message. I don't know how to explain it. He, this time, he gave me a crumb trail. I followed it. Then he downloaded me with understanding when I watched the Troll Hunters. Everything just the picture came together and since then he's been giving me more pieces to this puzzle so as i'm giving you guys this message the puzzle pieces are coming to me to to make it even clearer and the picture is just getting bigger and bigger and it's it's urgent it's so urgent so please just bear with me i'm, I'm doing the best i can to get this to you in the tv show troll hunters this show is so prophetic is so prophetic okay there's also the tv show from netflix puss in boots i know it sounds ridiculous it sounds i don't know how these things are hidden in the most ordinary places but puss in boots puss in boots is the same story as the troll hunters it's different but the the prophetic message is the same okay i can't uh break it down to you like in five seconds so um let, let's just start here what you see before you are the the main characters in the the tv show troll hunters um this is jim we're going to talk about him and we said that this represents jesus or or the um the priesthood of mesodec or the uh 144,000 or the woman of revelation 12 i mean those are all the same people that are is being talked about in the bible and their archetypes. I'm sorry if you hear my dog. That's my dog snoring. That's my dog Snoopy. Can can you hear him snoring? He's old. He's 17 years old. The message that the Most High Father has told me is that the ephod here represents us, the 12 tribes. Okay. Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, when he comes back in the verse of, of Revelation 14, we are his epot, okay? He gathers us. and We are the downfall of um, the system at the end of the age. Now, we all know that Jesus already has the victory when he died on Calvary. This process is actually the um, harvest and coming to get us, right, and establishing New Jerusalem. Um, and as well, we have um, stones that we need to collect to unlock our power to be able to withstand the evil in, the, um, in this process through the tribulation, right? That's coming. 
Um, and as well, the stones represent four groups of people that will be saved. Now, this is just a new message that the Father has given me, um, like in the past two days. So uh, I'm trying to fit this piece into the puzzle that was already complicated. So I, I'm not going to go into depth about that this second. I'm going to talk about it in the, the next part. But it's a very, very important thing that you guys have to know right now. There are four groups of people who will escape the wrath, okay? Um, one of those groups is is um, us. The the We are called the the tribulation saints the end time ministers okay but we are hidden we are the fourth piece the other three groups are represented in the characters we're going to talk about why i think it's so urgent is because one of the groups this this one is represented by him right here this character right here represents the first group of people who will leave the um and these people it has to do with the water dreams that everybody is having and we are misinterpreting these dreams a lot of people are interpreting it as the rapture but i want you guys to realize that people can go home to heaven without being raptured Okay, so just because you dream of a bunch of saints going to heaven don't mean it's the rapture. You guys understand that, I hope. Let's talk about the TV show because the TV show helps to illustrate the, the prophetic dreams that we are having, what is written in the Bible, and all of the phenomenon and messages that all of us, his children, are getting. This cartoon helps us to visualize it and to put it into context so we can understand better, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. You with me? All right. The synopsis of the TV show. Please pause the video, read it for yourself. Everything that I'm going to present to you, I have proof for everything. I'm not telling you anything that's from my imagination or my feelings or my thoughts or anything. I got every, I got something to back up everything I tell you, okay? So just bear with me. Um, if you haven't seen the TV show, pause and read this. Um, we're going to explain. So beneath the fictional town of Arcadia lives a secret civilization of trolls which humans are oblivious to. We're just going to stop there. That's as far as I need to get. <laughs> okay. Arcadia. In this TV show, there are three realms. There is Arcadia. There is Troll Market. And then there is the Darklands. Okay. What I'm telling you now is that symbolically, Arcadia represents real life, what we are living now, real life before the tribulation or before whatever bad thing that is going to come and happen and destroy and kill and maim and well, I don't know before the Antichrist I don't know it is the world before the tribulation the real tribulation not the pre-trib the real one Arcadia is it seems to be where we go to be protected in the wilderness when it says the woman in Revelation 12 will flee to the wilderness and be saved or protected. I can't tell you what that means in real life if it's really like a space planet or a dimension or someplace on earth or under the earth. I don't know where that place is but that's what it represents. And then the dark lands is the world after um, the tribulation and Jesus is coming back and with the 144,000 to to do the harvest Okay, so these three rams in the in the cartoon are actually two uh, different times with the The escape in the middle. Okay, you guys with me now You've already read this yourself or you've seen the TV show So I don't need to read it out loud to you, but I'll come back um as we go through to, to keep people on track who haven't seen the TV show, okay? So, Arcadia. This is lovely. I love how um, the Holy Father works because he's blessed me 
not, he's blessed me to have a real experience of him and his power. Because it's not like when you go to church and you know you just have a, a preacher reading you know a bible a text or whatever it's happening i'm living his bible i'm living his words i i am living proof of his existence in the way that he teaches me and shows me and blesses me and i just want to give all the glory and honor to him right now and thank you so much holy father the way you work is truly 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 um magnificent so arcadia my sister and my aunt both of them their birthdays are on january 13th okay that would be one one three january 13th 2015 before Okay, I kept seeing 113 or 1113 everywhere. I mean, I saw it like five times from my house to my job, uh, to school, and back. And it just got to the point where I got really worried because I know that that is uh, my sister's number. So I called her and I said, are you okay? Uh, it, you know, I thought, I don't, I don't know. I didn't know what I thought because before that happened, I had already experienced um, seeing numbers and then a terror attack, because I live in Paris, a terror uh, attack happened already. I had a, a dream and in the dream it said, uno hueve canze and I didn't know what it mean and we had a terror attack on that date. It was, uh, I think it was January 8th, uh, twenty. 15 if I if I'm remembering it correctly, but it's documented in my videos um, So when I was seeing 113 or and 1113 everywhere I got nervous because of the first time it was a terror attack. So I called her. I said, are you okay? She said yeah, I'm fine But my daughters are flying to Texas on a Friday Which would Friday the 13th and she was like do you think they're gonna be okay? And and I was like no, I, I don't I don't know what it means. I just was checking in with you actually so I, I actually made her nervous and so on that day there was the second terror attack that happened in Paris right um, so after that I, uh, that was next last year 2016 I started seeing it again but I'm seeing these numbers always in conduct conjunction with 9-11 so in both in all three situations because um, I had God had given me the dates to these terror attacks, so I was seeing 9/11 with it. So last year, 2016, I started seeing um, 113 again or 1113 because I was you're never sure. I see both, and then I was seeing the 911 again and the 119 both ways. So I started getting nervous again. Um, I went to home. <laughs> I'm trying not to tell you guys all my personal information. Uh, I went home in the states. Midwest um, and saw my sister and I was telling her I was seeing I was telling everybody that I was seeing 113 or 1113 again because it was right before the elections uh, with Trump and Hillary and I didn't know what it meant I didn't know if it would be another terror attack and I, I was just nervous so I was just telling everybody I don't know what this means but just in case you know um, so it turns out that the 9-11 Sorry, the 11-9 was um, the day that Trump actually became president because it was supposed to be on the 18th or the 8th, however that works. Was it the 8th? It was supposed to be the 8th, and then you had all the confusion, and so it wasn't actually until the 9th, so you had your 11-9. And on 11-13, which was, um, happened to be the Christchurch earthquake, which was very, very big, and the symbolism of the fact that it's called Christ Church. So I put that in this video. And um, that was um, prophesized by Minister Minister Paul, excuse me, it was uh, prophesied by Minister Paul because he was talking about the 7-3 and the 3-7. And I, in this video, I broke all of that down and I understood that God was calling me to publicly start my ministry on that day so uh, Minister Paul's video came up the day before the 12th and uh, in that video I'm explaining that 7-3 means earthquake okay 
And then on the next day, we had the Christchurch earthquake. It was the 1113, and I understood that I was to start my um, my ministry publicly. And, and that's the day I started. So I want you to know that 113 is huge. 1113 and 113 is huge personally in my life, okay? Not only do we have the 113, okay? My sister... I tried to block out her information, so I hope she's not mad at me. Um, I don't think you can find uh, information just with 113 Arcadia. That's her address. She lives on Arcadia Street, okay? Arcadia means region offering peace and contentment. It's of Greek origin. Now, this is huge, this is huge, big, so important that it's Greek. We'll, you'll see soon. And it's just giving back up to what I'm telling you that Arcadia in the TV show here, when it says Arcadia representing our life as we know it now, meaning peace and contentment before the tribulation, they will be marrying and giving in marriage before it happened, just like in the days of Noah, you know, that verse. So that's what I'm telling you. I'm not using my brain or my imagination to, to tell you these things. It is the Holy Father in living through me in my life telling me these things that I am telling you. I hope you guys feel me on this, okay? I'm just going to try to tie in the mezzo deck really quick so you guys know why that's so important and how I connected <laughs> the order of mezzo deck to Troll Hunters. I know this is insane, but just stick with me. So, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And, and everything I'm talking about, I don't know much about anything, to be honest with you guys. I'm only telling you what I've understood that the Father has told me. So, I just told you the story about 1113, how God warned me about that before it happened. It was the terror attack in Paris. It's my sister's birthday. Um, all of that. It is also the quadrain for the Dead Sea Scrolls that they talk about Mesodec. And it was found in Cave 11. Okay, so you have 11. Q is actually 8. And then the only other number that is not 1 is 3. So what is 8 plus 3? 11. So you have, if you do a little math, you don't have to, because you can just say 11, because you have this Q that separates from the 13. So 11, 11, or you have 11, milk, 11, and then it was found in cave 11. So no matter what you do, it's going to come up 11, 11, or 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. It just goes, it's just 11, 11, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. The reason I came up with the 1, 1, 1, 1 is right before this happened, I had about two or three people write me and ask me, what does 11, 11 mean? What does 11, 11 and 9, 1, 1 mean? And I had it, I don't know, like two or three comments or uh, emails, combination of emails and comments in and, and like a couple of days. And I see 1111 all the time. And so it was on my mind. And then when I was doing this work, there it is, 1111, which means Mesodec. Okay. Um, and in the last video, I was explaining to you guys about how I got to Mesodec with this other sister. So you, you, I hope you're following me because I really don't have time to go back and re-explain these things. I hope you saw the other video about that. In short, um, it's Yeshua HaMashiach. And the order of Mesodec is the 144,000. So yes, if you, you can pause the video and read all of this and it explains, you can do your research about it. But I just wanted to show you quickly, this is how this is how Mesodec got into the mix. So here, when you see uh, Matthew 22, 14, for many are called, but the chosen are few, or the few are chosen. Um, so when you're seeing 1111, that is the Father calling you 
to 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 the priesthood and then you have to accept or not you know you accept the calling or not and then and then out of that you know the chosen are few um, I don't know what else more to say about that so back to the synopsis um, so Arcadia lives a secret civilization of trolls, which are which the humans are oblivious to. The trolls' com, uh, common enemy are the gum gums. I thought this was funny because it's muggles. If you put it back, mugs, or made me think of muggles. But in this cartoon, they're evil trolls from the dark lands. Again, the dark lands we said would be the world after the tribulation. Um, Armageddon, pretty much. Uh, whom the trolls chosen warrior known as the troll hunter is supposed to protect them among other dark miscreants so 15 year old james jim lake jr and his friend toby find a mystical amulet which grants him the troll hunter mantle he is shortly approached by his new troll mentors blinky and arg despite his initial reluctance of leading two difficult lives he eventually accepts his role after discovering that neglecting the amulet will never lead to its return will nevertheless lead to its return during his visits to Hearthstone troll market the presence of the first human troll hunter stirs resentment okay so we'll stop there because you guys have already read this text and you've already seen the TV show and you've already done your study so you're making my job much easier to explain this to you thank you for your help brothers and sisters first fruits is represented in the fact that he is the first human to wear this mantle or this honor or this privilege as the troll hunter okay so that's the first fruits part in the timeline jesus yeshua hamashiach gave us the hidden timeline in john uh 21 i believe and numbers 13. So in the first timeline, John 21, hidden timeline, we talked about, and everything starts in 2014, okay? I don't know how, I I mean, I know there's been people prophesying and ministering for millennia, so I don't know why 2014 is particularly special or what about it, but that is a starting point for something that happened. It it happened for me as well. and so the fact that he is 15 years old what it means that i'm understanding is it started at 14 he started um whatever was in preparation and then in at 15 years old is when he started doing his duty and that's what happened with me as well and in, in 2014 I started, you know, getting all the pieces coming together and started like, uh, you know, something's going on here. And then 2015 is when I um, started, you know, and it was very difficult because I, I didn't come public until 2016, but I was starting already doing the work in 2015. Um, and I remember I've, I was talking to friends about this feeling of being in between two worlds. So you have Arcadia um, and then you have the troll market and this feeling of being in between the two worlds um, and understanding that this is a duty that you cannot put down you don't have a choice after you get to a certain point you there's no turning back actually and that's what he's talking about right right here this duty you can't get away from this you know and so he's talking about it in the cartoon here it's so funny to see that um wow there you go so like i said in this video the most important thing is to break down the characters because once i show you what each character represents it's their archetypes they're the same archetypes that are in the bible the same archetypes that are in our dreams. Um, it's just repeating the same story over and over. James Jim Lake. You guys, I don't know if you see by yourself how prophetic that name is. So we're going to talk about the name meaning. Um, you have the lake of fire. You have living water. 
you have a bunch of river dreams that everyone is having right now and submarine dreams okay so I'm gonna try to break down those things to you um, concerning his name Lake we're going to look at the actors for all of these characters because it's I'm telling you this is a phenomenal phenomenal thing I'm telling you you have to stick through this with me um, and um, he also represents Atlas the Atlas so this is talking about the tribes this is talking about New Jerusalem y'all right here oh man oh I, I pray that somebody's hearing me this is crazy this is the screenshot from sharing the gifts video trip to a heavenly place time travel okay so we talked about that in the in the last part of this series and he had a dream and we said that his dream where he went to looked like a troll market okay so please see the other video to understand that um, in this video he dreams about the water and in his dream he had a ship and the, the ship um, broke the you know the buildings and um, so I just wanted to bring that up for your memory because it has to do with um, the river it has to do with water lake okay um, and also in the video I did about that I had a dream about a submarine and my dream about the submarine was very similar to his dream uh, about the boat and all of that so uh, my one of my favorite brothers from another mother who I've never met um, I, we've we have been in contact since the last video through text mess and not text but um comments on videos um, such a lovely guy hi brother Robert um, so he came out with another video it was May 4th and gosh I'm gonna use like come back to this a few times in this video he's talking about uh, a few important points but the most important point is the submarine dream because it's the same dream that I had in the last video I just showed you guys. So he had it here. So let's listen to that really quick. So then I had this other dream. Um, in this dream, I was in a submarine and I was watching all this, this scene happen, this scene of chaos going on. And there was this siren going off, like wah, wah, wah. like the same type of siren you would hear in the movies when, when uh, something happens with, with a, a submarine. Uh, and and then there was water. I noticed there was water filling up in the hall, and all the men were just running around frantically trying to get the hole patched where the water was coming from. So I noticed that all the men were Asian and that made me think about North Korea because of the light of all the things that are going on with the U.S. and North Korea right now. And I mean, it, you know, it could be other countries, too. And, you know, I'm not trying to say all Asian people are Korean or anything like that. So don't get offended if you're Asian. But I'm just saying that's what came to mind. Um, because of all the war that's been being talked about, all the rumors of war with the U.S. and North Korea. So then I also knew that the submarine had just been hit by a missile or a torpedo, and that's where the hole came from. So I figured that this was a war or a military submarine, and I was in the middle of some type of battle. So I knew that there were people that had been sucked out of this hole when it got hit and, and they went into the ocean and they drowned and there were people that were in the hall, in the submarine that were under the water drown, drowning. The next dream I want to share um, was a vision I had and it was it was pretty cool, pretty sweet. So. I saw myself and other people were walking down into this murky water and it was inside of, it was like in a swamp or like a jungle paradise. 
and I knew there were possible alligators in this water that I couldn't see. But I also knew that if I trusted God, he would lead them to swim past me as I walked through this deep water. So it was up to about my chest. And then the, the, the song, it was a song that popped in my head. And it was the song, Wade in the Water. So that, and that, that popped in my head. And then I saw that we had got to the other side of this water and on like on the bank or the shore of the land. And we were then climbing up out of this water. And I noticed the person in the front had on this jacket. And on the back of the jacket, it said heaven. Like it was written heaven on the back of the jacket. And I felt like we all had these jackets on. Then the next thing I wanna share um, was a word that I got and I heard, I'll be back on a black horse to get you. So I don't know if this was talking about getting you like coming to pick you up or getting you like to attack you. Okay, so now you heard that, well, I'll come back to this video, his video at later point, at a later time for the other points. Here, this sister wrote me um, this uh, comment on the, the video we were just talking about, that uh, the, the first part of this series. I also had a dream about being on another planet. What? <laughs> I can't describe it all that, I can't describe it all that well because I don't remember much of it. I remember you could see all the stars. The sky was pink, purple, and orange. Come on, get out of town. Um, I was coming out of my room there and the air was pure and fresh. People were worshiping the Most High. Amen. Ooh, I love worshiping the Most High. Then I saw the big spaceship that looked like a submarine dropping off people. I could see Earth as well. I then heard that they were being held there for until tribulation. Y'all, it's the same. I had the dream, she had the dream, he had the dream like twice. And that's not all, there's more. I just can't go through it all right now. In the next video, I'm gonna show you more. It's gonna drop, knock your socks off, okay? Um, and last but not least, this beautiful sister here from South Africa, who I've obviously never met, um, she sent me an email and this is the strangest phenomenon that's happening people are beginning to send me their dreams but their dreams that they send me are pieces of the puzzle of the message that God has given me at that particular time this is the I mean the way God works is in I mean when people try to tell me they're no God I just look at them like pray I pray for you I pray right now the Holy Father Yeshua HaMashiach in Jesus holy name I pray for those people who are not aware of your presence and I pray that you that um, uh, we stand in the gap for them we plead the blood of Jesus over them for their protection that they may see you and hear you and know that you are God Ooh, hallelujah pray 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 for your brothers and sisters please um, Brothers and sisters, pray for your brothers and sisters. So this is a dream. Um, read it for yourself. This is only half. It's a very long dream. I have the other half later in the video, um, but this is what we want to deal with right now, the first part. I was at a holiday resort. It was. It had a lovely green grass area and a dirty water river next to it. Sound familiar? He had the dirty water, right? I walked into the green grass where we had a sort of course presenter and people was sitting in round so sitting round in circles for the classroom discussions the presenter then told me to look for any smaller group up to five in a group that i could join a group it was um, a type of bible study course i looked over to the river and in the river i saw two horses who he Later, he talks about the horse that shows up, the black horse. Two horses in the river where the river went uh, to their knees about. The horses walked in water. 
one brown and one black. I'm going to, I'm going to break down this dream. I'm going to show you everything and prove it. Okay. One black, one brown horse. I saw people in the water. There we go again with the water. They had orange clothes on like prison suits and they were chanting something while walking in the river. The people, what did he say in his dream? Wade in the water. They were singing Wade in the water. The people in my group said the people are summoning Indian spirits here. I stood up and the others in the group just looked at me. As I stood up, I started rebuking Satan. I shouted it so they could hear me. Suddenly some men from the group started running to the river and I looked in the river and there was upside down bodies floating everywhere in this river. In the dream, it felt like it was mostly women. A man from my group then came running out of the river saying, we have to rescue the children as they are drowning, busy drowning. He had four children in both his hands and in his, in his arms. I ran to him and took two young boys from his arms. I got one to start breathing and then started dressing him like uh, they were they were like swimming, no dry clothes on. So while I dressed the boy, a woman in the house where I took them to in conversation told me that he's the boy who previously visited them, but he was a very naughty child and that he is a Greek. What did I say? The, the name of Arcadia? It's Greek. Remember that. After that child was okay, I then wanted to take the boy to lie down and rest a bit on the couch. When I was on my way uh, with him to the couch, my mother, who passed in 2016, my condolences, sister, was there, and I overheard that she wanted to give something away as a gift. I told the little Greek boy then that the lady is very strict, but if he was really good, she might give him the gift like a toy or a bow and arrow, perhaps. Remember that, please. Some shooting boy's toy. I then put him down on the couch to rest. When I looked around to the outside, I saw the other boy I collected from the river inside a plastic shopping store bag. Important. He then got up and climbed out the bag, but he seemed just fine. So this is representing the four groups of people that will be uh, saved, rescued. When we are rescued and we go to, uh, we're gonna call it troll market for the moment, for lack of a better word. So in general, I'm gonna come back to this dream over the video, but the most important thing to know is that the people that are on the grass, the sister who was writing the email, um, who witnessed these things, that is representing the fourth group, the invisible group, who are the 144,000, the the um, the Kaleb in in the the timeline that we talked about from Numbers uh, 1330. Um, they are the the witnesses. They are the the woman of Revelation 12. Um, the, the chosen, the, the 1111 order of Mesodec, okay? These are the people that are in these groups on the grass doing the Bible study, okay? The river represent, it's a time, time, a, a, a dimension, okay? A changing of dimension. And in the TV show, uh, Troll Hunters, we will talk about the bridge because it's called Killahead Bridge. And that is very important. In real life, Killahead Bridge is the Ark of Baal, the Ark of Palmyra that is traveling the world. I can't get too far ahead of myself. You see, guys, understand how deep this is. So I'll come back to that point. But for the moment, just remember the river is dimensions, okay? And, and time, I guess. Um these people that are in the river that it's the same dream this brother and this sister they they're having the same dream um i think maybe her dream happens after his dream his dream is like the first part and then her dream is the second part but so these people that are in the water are three the three types of of groups that will be saved okay um and we as the end time ministers the 1111 mesodec 
um, ministers of um, Order of Mesodec, we are to go and help them through this process. That's why we are the end time ministers, okay? She, the sister went and got them out. The brother that she's talking about here, he had four children. I'm going to prove everything I'm telling you, okay? So we'll just, just take that for granted that I'm going to prove it right now. For time's sake, the four children in his hand. Um, okay, so you have the four. The four groups that are, that are going. Um, and these four groups also represents four stones. Also represents the four. In the Ipad, you have four rows. Okay, so those four rows are the four groups. You guys with me? Okay, so the order of, of Mesodec um, is we are um, bringing these four groups of people together, including ourselves, if that makes sense. We're all coming together, okay? And when we all come together, of course, it's complete. And that's the ephod that Yeshua HaMashiach wears. And we ourselves are collecting these four stones for ourselves as well, right? We get four stones. Yeshua, the Holy Savior, gets the four rows completely filled of the 12 tribes. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. So each children represents four groups, which represents four rows on the ephod, including us, the Mesodec. Okay. So he takes two and the sister takes two. The two that the sister has uh, is the, um, a church down here who is fine. So this church is, is just fine. There's nothing really to talk about. They're fine. They don't have any trouble. It's fine. Um, the other uh, group that um, was a naughty, but will get a gift if it's if they're good, I guess, are people who change their ways uh, after this happened. So that happened to a lot of people. After 9-11, we woke up. It woke us up. And so this is going to happen for the, that group of people who might be asleep right now, but after this happens, they're going to wake up and get it together and be all right. So those, those are two groups of people. And then the, the brother had the other two groups of people. So, so there was a group of people, I mean, as far as this dream is concerned, who go to heaven. Um, and this is what I'm understanding is that they die. There's something that happens where a group of us are going to die very soon. Um, I can show you this. I've talked about it in other videos. Um, you see this picture right here. It's marked Romans 116, but Romans 116 doesn't exist. I was um, in my bedroom reading the Bible on my iPad, put the iPad down, went to the kitchen, came back, and this was on my iPad. I took a screenshot because I knew that it didn't exist. It, it's just a computer glitch inside the program I was using. I was using the Blue Bible app. Um, but before this happened, I was seeing 116 everywhere. And in my old videos, I talk about it. That's how I understood I was a messenger because 116 means messenger and all of that. And um, I was talking about it at the same time I was talking about the 1113 or the 113 when I went home uh, last year in 2016 in August. So it is a very, very important number, the 116 as well. And so what I've understood over time was that the message is when you look at this verse right here, it's talking about Thanksgiving and it's saying that, um, that it grieves the father, the death of his saints. Right. So there is going to be, from what I'm understanding from all of this, there's going to be an upheaval. There's going to be something that's happening with the water. Could be a missile, could be a submarine, could be a, yeah, I, I don't know. It's a bad thing that happens. It comes out of the water and it is, it's going to take a, a nice chunk of us home. Okay. And in this dream, it seems to be represented as the fifth group, but that, that, fifth group that I was talking about would be um, that um, character that I, I showed you at the beginning. 
So if they're taking a, if they're taken away right away. So here we're still looking at the name of James and what that means. So James is a classic boy's name derived from Hebrew, Jacob, and it means supplanter, one who follows. And this is very important because in the timeline that Yeshua HaMashiach gave us that we talked about, uh, John 21, um, we talked about this verse and we said that this represents 2019. Okay, do you remember that? Go back and look at that video if you don't know what I'm talking about, please. Jesus said to he, Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would uh, glorify God. After he had said this, he told him, "Follow me." Oh my Lord, Heavenly Father, I'm really afraid right now because is that the date? Is that the year that this thing is going to happen? 2019. You see this? It's a tree, and it's in a gat stone. Okay. There's a long story about how that happened, and I'll tell you in the next video. But th this message that the Father has given me, I've understood. You just have to take it on faith until I can explain it to you in the next video. So this agat represents right here, number eight. So what I'm saying is the group of people that will be going home to the Father. Perhaps we are understanding in 2019 are represented by a GAT and that character in the TV show. And so a lot of people are having these dreams about the water and the rivers and all this and the submarines and the boats and you're thinking that it's rapture time I'm not saying it ain't. I'm saying be careful of your interpretation. So we're still at the name of James. Um, so in the TV show, the um, Mr. Strickler, we'll talk about him later, he's his teacher, calls him Young Atlas. So what does Atlas mean? It represents adapt, adept expertise, having all the answers in some particular field or skill, the ability to totally control people or completely manipulate situations to a desired outcome. An atlas may be a sign that you have nothing left to learn in some area, so you pretty much become an expert. Um, and he calls them young atlas, so understanding that um, we, are representing the, the, the order of the priesthood of Mesodec, um, we are probably right now young atlases we're learning you know but we will be experts we will be master workmen when it is time you know that's what this process is about um, and even more than that I can't talk about it in this video you guys are understanding how deep this is I'm hoping we are actually the map we are the atlas of New Jerusalem it is made of us do you understand? We represent the walls. We represent the, the gems that make up the foundation of New Jerusalem. So when you're talking about an atlas or a map, this is it right here. And look, guys, I'm just noticing this as I'm speaking. One, two, three, a four. And then you have the fifth right here. Oh my goodness. And it says that he represents the Levi's. Oh my gosh. Okay, I don't know if I have time to prove this to you. I'll prove it in the next video, but the 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 fifth group in the sister's dream that I read and and it says that there were five groups, remember? And I said there were four groups that will be saved, but in her dream it's represented as five groups and that the, the first group that will be going to heaven, as far as the dreams are concerned, um, is represented as the fifth group for her, but I said it is that character, I can't remember his name, L L I can't remember his name, but you'll see this character right here um, that I said is represented by a gat. And I'm, for each character, I'm looking up the name of the actor to have confirmation of the, the archetype symbolism, and it says, the name of the actor that plays um, that troll, um, his name is Matthew, 
um, Watterson. And when you look up the name of Matthew, he was a Le Levi. Levi, disciple of God, a tax collector. That's why in her dream, it's five groups. And that's why the first group to go is the this one. Represented by... Because the tree of life is in the center of New Jerusalem. <sighs> Y'all. So we are going to use the name of the actor for each character to confirm the archetype symbol archetype symbolism of each character. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I don't know why it's that way, but it is. And I'm going to prove to you it is. Yeah, they, it has to, it, either it's on purpose or it's, it's spiritual. You know, the Holy Spirit is making this happen or, or I, I, I cannot answer that question, but it is real. Okay. So this guy, um, Anton Yelchin is the voice of Jim. Or James, the main character, the 144,000 in the TV show. Now we know, or you may know, that he died in a freak accident um, where the car ran over him in his driveway. His own car ran over him and killed him in his driveway when he was taking out the garbage or some crazy story. Um, and a lot of people were saying he was an Illuminati sacrifice. So that happened while he was doing Troll Hunters. So it's just another thing that's saying that this is prophetic. This cartoon is highly, 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 super, hooper duper prophetic. They killed, if it's true, that it was an Illuminati sacrifice. And many people have, you know, believed that. And you can look it up yourself and have your own idea. But let's say it was true that he was an Illuminati sacrifice while he was doing a character representing the 144,000 slash possibly Jesus in the cartoon. I hope you guys are with me. Look, I'm just telling you what happened. You make your own decisions. This, God bless his soul. I'm sure he was a great guy. May he rest in peace. I pray that he is right now in the holy hands of Yeshua Hamashiach, our Holy Father, and that he is in peace. He was in the TV show, Star Trek, okay? This is another proof, okay? I did the video about the 144 and saying that that represents the 144,000, did I not? I explained what it meant, here you can read that, and I explained how I got it, I explained everything in that video, go back and look at it. Space travel. Space travel, Star Trek. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Come on. Space travel, Star Trek. The actor who did the, the voice for, for James in the TV show, who was sacrificed. Come on. Now, this is not even over. This is just the beginning. This Kia David stuff, oh my goodness, y'all better, ooh. The first, what did I tell you? He was the, representing the first um, fruits because he was the first human to wear the mantle of this responsibility. I'll let you read this yourself. Um, pause it and read it. Now, the story of Jade, uh, I started to tell you guys about uh, how I got this agat and this story. It's just too much to tell you in this video. I'll tell you in the next video, but let's just say that it's just more proof. All right, so Blinky, um, in this video, the brother sharing gifts talks about Blinky. And this was, this is a picture of Trollville and that was his dream as we talked about in the last video. And we can see that they look a lot alike. Now, I just wanna say quickly that I don't know, I, I don't have answers for that, like why he looks that way. I don't know what we're dealing with, but I can say that the Father is almighty and all powerful and he can use a rock. He could take a rock, like it says, you know, don't get, don't get, um, 
vain and think that because you are don't say that you're the child of Abraham and and think that that's going to cover everything because he can uh, take a rock and make a, a descendant of Abraham. He can use anything. He can use everything. Okay. So if there are beings or, or something like that, that looks like that, I mean, I, you know, with God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, 26. So I guess one day we'll find out. But this character in the TV show, um, grandiose in speech and never ending enthusiasm. Blinky is the chief troll advisor to Jim. So, and his friends. So it's representing our spiritual guide type of situation our angels. He views himself as a mastermind and diligent trainer through the rest of troll kind considers though the rest of troll kind considers him as a crackpot for embracing Jim as the first ever human troll hunter. Blinky sees potential in Jim even when almost no one ever does and he will do anything to help him succeed. So this is like representing our uh, spiritual guides, our spiritual angels. Now the the funny part is you'll see as we go through this how amazing this is. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Oh, okay. So he's voiced by Kelsey Grammer. Okay. The name, what does, um, Kelsey mean? Ships Island, victory ship. What did I just spend the whole first part of the, this thing talking about the dream where the, um, sharing the gifts, he had the ship come up you know, all the dreams about the um, submarine coming up, like I, my dream, and the other sister who said she had the submarine come up and drop off the people to Trollville. Well, that's what we're going to call it from now on, because we don't know what it is. So Trollville, um, it's Victory Ship. The brother dreamed about going to this uh, pl uh, planet and having this blinky character welcome him. Victory Ship. In other words, succeeding to get on the ship, to get to, to be rescued. Y'all come on. And grammar, his name, grammar, I know it's not exactly the same, it's an E here, but it's the same meaning. Um, the first Aeon, male virgin, Barbello, the first glory of the invisible father. So... Um, again, it's like an angelic type of being. Um, this, when you take the number of grammar, grammar in Roger Thesaurus, uh, whatever it is, this is the Bible verse that um, confirms the meaning of grammar, uh, Deuteronomy 33 through 5. Then the Lord your God will restore you from captivity and have compassion on you and will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. If your outcasts are at the ends of the earth, from there the Lord your God will gather you and from there he will bring you back. The Lord your God will bring you into the land which your fathers possessed and you shall possess it and he will prosper you and multiply you more unto your fathers more than your fathers. Y'all, I, 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 I almost right now, I feel like I'm about to leave my body because I can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. Listen, please. The sister's dream, the one that wrote me the email from South Africa, the people were wearing orange as if they were prisoners, okay? The Lord your God will restore you from captivity. This is why they had on that orange jumpsuit like they were prisoners. Because he is releasing them from captivity. That group. The Levites. Represented by a cat. Represented by that troll. I wish I knew his name. Maybe it's Blar. Um... And so, yes, he's going to gather us. So that's what grammar means. And that's what this character is representing. That's why it's our spiritual angels, our, our spiritual guides who are helping to gather us together and bring us to Trollville, just like in the cartoon. It's written right here. Ship victory, victory ship collecting the his children and and gathering them back together into a land grammar the definition of grammar just by itself it's it's talking about 
the basic elements or an area of knowledge or skill, um, a set rules governing what strings are valid or allowable in a language or text. And we're talking, or grammar school, and we were talking about the father's name is Pi. We're talking about those numbers are to be called letters and the word, Jesus is the word and grammar, his angels, his 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 spirit the, our spiritual guides are the ones that are giving schooling us a grammar school he is the one that trains um 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 jim to succeed he has the knowledge or skill that he is giving us and helping us to get to trollville just like in the cartoon arg that's his name because when people see them they scream now this character represents the leaves so Fred Tata Skieri I'm telling you I pray you watch this video to the end I pray you watch this whole series this will change your life is as Ark Jim's ally who has a deep bond with Toby he was born a Kubera troll but joined the gum gum army so this is the evil he was born here but he left to go to the evil ones after his traumatizing experience there he became a self-proclaimed pacifist and remains guilty about the past despite his peaceful demeanor he will fight with all his considerable strength to protect those he cares about during the final battle with anger rot he was mortally wounded and turned into a stone statue so anger rot is the um, he is the tribulation anger rot is the tribulation and he also represents the beast system okay we'll talk about that later so this guy the reason I said he represents the leaves um, and I talk about the leaves here in this video okay and I talk about the pre fire the harvest I talk about all of that all right that's what this guy is representing. Why do I say that? Because at the end he turns into a statue, a stone statue, and you guys remember what a statue is and from the Bible. It's when uh, Lot uh, and his wife, they left um, Babylon, or I think it was Babylon, and then she turned around and she turned into stone. There you go. Um, you also have the fact that he, what he was peaceful, then he went to the evil side, but then at the end, he had the choice in the TV show. He had the choice to go back with the Kubrera and leave his friends who were fighting um, Angerot. And he chose to go to leave and go home. It's a long story. Watch the TV show. Now, let's, let's see if there's confirmation about that. So I took the name of the, the actor, which is right here, Fred Tata Siori. And I, I, I speak French, so I recognized right away that Tata is a word. Um, and I put it in the translation, and it says, I know daddy. And right as soon as I saw daddy, it made me think of, um, there's a sister, I think her name is Gael, no. And in one of her videos, she, was, she had a rapture video, and she was saying, daddy is coming, daddy is coming. Just, you know, that when you... When you have that relationship with Yeshua HaMashiach and, and the, the Father and the Holy Spirit, you, you're familiar that way. You feel that way. It's like Abba, Abba Father. You feel Daddy. So this character knows Daddy, but he he left. He left. And yeah, turns the stone at the end. That's not cool. So if you are a leaf, please come back. Please come back. Time is running out. Okay, the other character is Strickler. So what is a strickle? A strickle is an instrument used to level off grain. In short, it is a scythe. Okay, so he is a demon. He's human, but inside he actually is a demon Look, that looks like human. The real human was taken as a baby to the dark lands and he was replaced by this demon but he has the appearance of the human so it's very simple these are demons inside of people you know they're the smiths like in um the matrix and all of that but the point of these demons is to sharpen 
a tool for sharpening scythes. Scythes, this is a scythe, and it is what will be used in the harvest, okay? Um, so when we look up Jonathan, as far as his name, it means gift of Jehovah, gift of God. That's the name of the actor that's playing this character. Okay, so gift of God. Um, what I'm understanding that makes sense is that fighting these demons, as we will do, um, because remember the Caleb um, in Numbers 1330, in that video, we talked a lot about it, um, how we have to go up and take back the land. Okay, you have to. So we have to go up and take back the land. We have to fight, right? And this is this is what we're fighting. We always remember we're fighting. Um, it's a spiritual war. <clears throat> we're we're fighting uh, fighting spirits of darkness and um, principalities and all of that. But doing that sharpens us. That is going through uh, the fire. That's how we get our gems that's how we get our stones because at the end of the cartoon <clears throat> this guy gives Jim uh, James Jim James the last stone even his name is Jim come on it's so obvious once we start talking about it it's just obvious um, so we have to fight these um, spirits of darkness in order to get our gems and once we get our gems it un unlocks our powers here we have uh, it's revelation 14 uh but it's revelation 14 14 so it's after the 144,000 have come down with yeshua hamashiach and i beheld uh, and look i beheld a white cloud and upon the cloud one sat like unto the son of man having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle uh and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice <coughs> To him that sat on the cloud, thrust into my sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And that he sat on the cloud, and he that sat on the cloud thrust into his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Um, and another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle saying, thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters and the vine of the earth for her grapes are full ripe. And the angel thrust his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. So um, this is talking about... Um, Yeshua coming back on that cloud uh, after, well, you know we come back with him and this is the, I think this is the real rapture when when we come back uh, with Yeshua and he gets he has the harvest and he gets all of his people all of the dead everybody the people who have died in, in Christ and was beheaded and all of that and everybody comes up and and, and, and goes um, to New Jerusalem so there's a a lot it's very complicated I can't talk about it now I'm understanding more and more stuff we'll talk about it in, in another video about New Jerusalem um, but yeah that is this Strickler character is directly uh, representing the demons or or the evil the powers of darkness that are going to make us stronger right that's why we're here um, so this number right here, 130, sorry, letter right here is 133. And the reason I put it up is because this is for 2017. And uh, it, it says, praise, thanks, offering, thanksgiving, prince of Persia, premonition, expectation, circuitousness, cloud, visibility. I escaped by flight, tidings, and news. I didn't know what this meant before, but now I'm starting to understand. I wrote something here. I'm not sure if what I wrote is right because I'm, I'm understanding more even just right now as I speak than I did when I wrote it. Um, but let's read it. You are thankful for the Thanksgiving Psalms 116, um, 17, Romans 116, 
fine sign from the father. And that is the, the message I was telling you guys earlier about how there was a computer glitch in my iPad and it said Romans 116, but there is no Romans 16. It's actually Psalms 116. And in that verse, it's talking about uh, Thanksgiving time. And I have a whole playlist talking about something happening at Thanksgiving, um, Christmas. And it's not only me, it's a lot of people. So, um, anyway, so I'm not under, I'm not sure if this line is talking about, um, the Thanksgiving premonition of something happening or just I'm thankful. So I put both. I'm thankful for perhaps that sign. Um, the Prince of per uh, Persia premonition. So the Prince of Persia is an unfavorable ruler of God's people right here. <clears throat> I skipped a little bit. Um, so Prince of Persia premonition, forewarning or foreknowledge. So understanding that in 2017, I get the premonition of the forewarning of the foreknowledge about the Prince of Persia and this Thanksgiving, perhaps calamity. I, so you have plans to grab something and to ascend, go forward, to go up higher um, levels and greet fellow spirits and evolution. You escape by flight and news of cloud visibility, which is the ascending to the sixth heaven by receiving the light and turning to Yeshua HaMashiach. Everyone is being seen for what and who they really are or what it really is. And I know I didn't write that really well, but it's so packed. <laughs> um, if I can explain it better. What I understand is this that I'm telling you right now is the Prince of Persia premonition, okay? I had a dream, um, and I have to tell you about it later. I think it's in the next video because I can't, I don't, I don't even know how to untangle all of this stuff. But I'll tell you really quickly, I had a dream um, about Prince, and but it wasn't Prince, it was a fake Prince. Okay, so it's talking about also the Prince of Persia. I'm not sure who it really is in real life, but I know that um, my dream said the bad man comes on April 19th, and that's when Trump accepted the um, New York, uh, he won New York um, and gave a big speech. I don't know. It could be uh, Obama because, you know, I had a dream that said Satan is coming and that was when he became president and that's when my grandma died. Um, I, it, it could it could even be um, the vice president. I don't know. I don't know who the Prince of Persia is right now, but the the premonition of him coming is what we're talking about. And I can say that because it says cloud visibility. I can't touch the screen, but you see it says cloud visibility. And we're talking in this cartoon about uh, sharpening the scythe. And that is a direct um, correlation to Yeshua coming back on the clouds, which is Revelation 14, which has to do with the 144,000, which is us coming back. It all ties together, right? So the I escape by flight uh, news, it's like saying that the premonition that we're receiving is that we escape. We go to Trollville by a submarine. I, I don't know. But that's what it's talking about. It's saying that this year in 2017 that uh, I get the premonition. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's saying what I'm telling you in this video. That's what 133 means. Okay, I, I don't I, I don't know how to write that right now to make it but I hope that you can see that it's it's very clear to me. I hope it's clear to you. Let's move on. And this whole thing about plans to grab something, it's just like my dream. I told you in my submarine a dream that I was reaching down and grabbing people and pulling them out like, like Superwoman. Or, and, and then the brother sharing gifts was talking about he was Superman or whatever. So plans to grab something. This is our plans to grab our brothers and sisters out this river like the sister's dream. She went and grabbed the four groups of people out the river with the brother. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. 1111, Order of Mesodec, hear me. We have to fight these, the powers of darkness, okay? And the principalities, and I don't know, I don't have the verse memorized, but that verse, we have to do that. And in exchange, we, we are, we get a stone every time, which unlocks more power for us. 
so that we have our armors. I, I hope y'all forget about this, this rapture stuff because like I said in other dreams, I hope, I pray to be found worthy to be uh, raptured when, when that is time and Yeshua comes back. But the message that I'm understanding here and that I'm showing you guys here is that is completely beside the point. The whole rapture situation is going to happen way, way at the end when he comes back on a cloud to to get all the people who have died and everything from the tribulation and all that stuff. You know, that's a long time from now. We're, what we're talking about is um, the, the rescue of the woman of Revelation, um, um, what is it, 12? When, when she goes into the wilderness and is um, protected for a time and a half or whatever the verse says, that's what we're talking about right now. And from what I'm understanding in this message, that is not going to happen until 2030, after 2030, but before 2033, just something like that. Like, bef like. So all this time now, our job is to grab uh, the people out of the dirty river um and, and 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 to to help our brothers and sisters and to fight the powers of darkness so we can get our gems that is the only thing we need to be concerned about right now and if the rapture happens it happens you pray that you're found worthy and god will save you he will take you if he comes back and if i'm wrong he will take you anyway but that's not the focus we are misinterpreting these dreams okay brothers and sisters i'm gonna stop here I feel it's a good place to stop and I'm going to come back with part two. This is crazy. You have to stick through to the end. You will be amazed. It will. Okay. This is the end of part one. God bless you. Shalom.